All right, hey you guys. We are going to be talking about how to create depth or the illusion of depth in a work of art. Now, when it comes to creating the illusion of depth, what that really means is we are using a 2D piece of paper to make something look 3D. So when people look at our artwork on this 2D piece of paper, it's, we are going to be giving the illusion or we're gonna be tricking their eye into thinking that they are looking at a scene that is real. We are going to be learning vocabulary such as proportion, proportion, proportion has to do with the size of something, okay? So if we have a tree way off in the distance, Let's say that this is a field, we have some fields, and then off in the distance, very, very far away from us are some trees, right? And maybe there's a couple that look a little bit like Christmas trees, and then there might be some that look like, whoops, there might be some that are some of those really tall trees. But they, the point is they are very small. They're away from us and they're pretty far away from us. Okay. Now, if the tree was a little bit closer to us from where we're standing, then it would take up a lot more of the paper because we would want to show that the proportion of the tree, the tree that is closer to us is going to be larger in size. All right, this is, this is my quick sketch of a tree. And there's the trunk there, okay? And perhaps maybe it is sitting on a little bit of ground. There's gonna be a little bit more detail closer to us, closer to the viewer, to say this is closer, it's larger. When it was near me, it felt very big. And the ones off in the distance though, they felt very small. Off in the distance, you are not going to see the detail around the base of the tree like you would if you were standing right in front of it. If a hot air balloon was sitting right in front of us, let's flip this over, this is one more example. But I'm going to turn my paper so it is uh, vertical. It's in portrait mode. So if there was a huge hot air balloon on the ground, just getting ready to go off into the sky, everything was ready, got the little bags. Let's put, because it's sitting on the ground, we're gonna put some grass. I'm not putting a lot of detail in this, but here's my horizon line. And maybe there's some people inside. They've got on their hats, their sunglasses because it's gonna be dark out there. And they're holding on to the side of the thing, okay? On the spot, that's how I'm gonna draw it for you. All right, holding on to the side, gotta give them an ear. And maybe there's a woman, she's got on a hat also, but she's gonna be holding her hat. Her hat's big, it's a big old hat, whoops. My eyes, smile, her hair is gonna be blowing in the wind. She's got on a pretty big, pretty hat. There we go. And everybody's ready. Look, she's gonna be just, wow, are we really gonna go up in the sky? Yes, we sure are we're gonna go up in the sky. All right, and here's the clouds. I'm gonna show the clouds up here. And there's our hot air balloon. Now they're still on the ground, right? Those are the bags. I don't remember what those bags are for. There's always bags hanging off the side of a hot air balloon. Maybe to help them stay weighted on the ground, right? So there's all this grass. Because all of this is happening close to us, we're able to see all the details up close. Okay, so there's that hot air balloon. It's so close to us, it's if we're just standing maybe about, you know, 10 feet away. Whereas off in the distance, there's some trees. 
There's a bunch of trees off there in the distance on that side. And then there's some trees off in the distance on that side. Okay. And we can we can tell that they're trees because they're big old, they're dark, and they have the shape of trees. Versus if there was a house out there, it might look more like a itty bitty little structure, right? Where it's not going to take up quite the height of a tree. Now, if there was already a hot air balloon out in the sky, it would not be so big, would it? It would be pretty small. We might not even be able to see all the detail. We probably wouldn't be able to see the little bags. We wouldn't be able to see the detail here in the basket. We wouldn't be able to see all that detail if there was one off in the sky. The clouds might feel quite a bit bigger with that hot air balloon out there because of things like proportion. When things get farther away from us, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. If you've ever accidentally let go of a balloon, maybe you've seen the balloon as it goes away from you, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller off in the sky. Another important word is placement. Now you've seen me using this word placement an awful lot. Placement has to do with where we put our shapes on the page. If we are drawing, for example, with this tree that's close to us, its, it's placement is near the bottom of our piece of paper or our canvas, if we're painting on a canvas or a piece of watercolor paper. It's going to be close to the bottom. If I move the sheet out of the way. Let me bring this up a little bit. There we go. All right, so you're able to see now that my tree is near the bottom of the paper. Things that are far away are close to the middle of the paper. And things that are very far away are usually close to the top of the paper. So that has that's that word placement, okay? It also has a lot to do with another word, which is overlap. Overlap or overlapping. When we overlap or we have overlapping going on, it means that we're showing what's closest. So if I have a river going through here and the tree is closer to me than that river, maybe it's a stream and it's going off this way, but then it circles back, circles back through that placement word and then it happens to go through that hill. So it's actually, because of gravity, it might be coming down this way, and then it's flowing in this direction. This is a little river. It's got some, some reeds around it, some high grasses around it, okay? Now the tree right here is overlapping my, my little stream. It's over, overlapping there is an overlap going on. That means the tree is in front and the stream is behind. And behind the stream, perhaps there are these high grasses right here. I'm just using my marker to make straight lines to give the impression that there are high grasses. And maybe in the high grasses, there is some cacti. I don't know how realistic it is, but we're just gonna draw some cacti, okay? Now, what is first, the, the cacti or the high grasses? Maybe there's another cacti here. Just a bunch, right? Because you never know. So, Right now I'm showing that the high grasses are closer to me. The cacti are farther away. So that they are being overlapped by the tall grasses, 
All right, that's that word overlap. If we had clouds up in the sky, and then there was a sun behind the clouds, you would tell me, Miss A, your cloud is overlapping your sun. And I would say, yes, you are correct. Great job, okay? So that's that word overlapping. So we have proportion, which has to do with the size of things, depending on their placement. If they are close to us, they are near the bottom of the paper. If they are kind of far away from us, they're not really, really far away like these trees, but they're kind of far away. They're going to be in the middle of the paper. And then let's say that further back are some mountains. See where those two touch? That's called a tangent. In art, we do not like lines or shapes to touch very much. But there's these mountains way out here in the distance. Ooh, those mountains are tall. Because proportionally, if that is the farthest away, then those must be huge mountains. Those mountains must be like Mount Everest and going up around the clouds because they're so high according to my proportion. I'm showing by this mountain and this mountain that they are very, very high in elevation. All right, so that is, those are the three um, pretty important uh, things to consider, words to consider. Again, proportion, placement, overlapping, or overlap. Okay, and that's how we create a feeling that on this 2D piece of paper, we have depth. Depth is uh, what's close to us and what's far away from us. 